If you're in a pre-calculus or calculus class, you've certainly heard of the unit circle and you may have even memorized the unit circle, but many students don't really understand what the unit circle is or where it comes from. That's what we want to take a look at in this video. Now we're not in this video going to focus on how to memorize the unit circle or how to memorize the points on the unit circle. Um, that'll be in the next video that's coming up after this one. For this video we just want to focus on where does the unit circle come from. So before we actually get, talking, uh, get to talking about the circle specifically, we need to take a step back and remind ourselves some basics uh, about trig functions. So if uh, here we have a right triangle and we have an angle uh, inside this right triangle, then we, we remember that the trig functions uh, give us a ratio of the edges of two sides of the uh, right triangle. So here's just a, a quick example, a sine of the angle will give you a ratio of the opposite edge here compared with the hypotenuse. So we would say sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So if the you know, opposite edge was 2 and the hypotenuse was 3, then we would say that sine of theta would be 2 thirds, for instance. That, that would be an example of the sine relationship. Now likewise, there's uh, also cosine and tangent. We'll talk about those in a minute, but for right now I just want to focus on sine um, here. So if I get, get rid of these here, uh, if I actually fill in some numbers, I'll, I'll just stick with the two-thirds, that's fine. So this edge is two, this edge here is three. Then one thing we know about uh, right triangles is that this ratio, two-thirds, will stay consistent even if we shrink the triangle. For instance, if I cut this whole uh, size of this whole triangle in half, I made each edge half as long as it was, then that ratio will stay the same. If this edge length here was 1, for instance, I know this isn't really to scale, but if this is 1 instead of 2, and this is 1.5 instead of 3, then I've scaled the triangle down, but you'll notice the ratio stays the same. You know, the ratio of 2 to 3 is equivalent to the ratio of 1 to 1 1.5. 1 1.5 would be 3 halves. And sure enough, if you take the reciprocal of 3 halves, that would be two-thirds. So you could scale this guy down or you can make it larger. Uh, you can make it a, a larger triangle with sides of four and a hypotenuse of six, and the ratio stays the same. Now that's really going to be the, the key to the unit circle that we'll get to in just a minute. All right, before we do that, um, let's just remind ourselves about the rest of the trig functions. We have sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta is the adjacent edge divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent of theta is the ratio of the opposite edge to the adjacent edge. So those are the three different pairs you can make between three different edges. Now, you would obviously get different answers if the ratio was taken the other way. So there's also cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And those are the reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, you can just notice here hypotenuse over opposite hypotenuse over adjacent instead of adjacent over hypotenuse and adjacent over opposite as opposed to opposite over adjacent. So we have all six trig functions here but the thing I want to, to key in on is the fact that everything can be expressed simply in terms of sine and cosine. Now I'm not going to go through the algebra but you're welcome to. Uh, obviously sine and cosine are, are themselves in terms of sine and cosine. Cosecant and secant would be 1 over sine and 1 over cosine respectively. And then uh, without doing a little algebra, you can do this at, on, on your paper, but tangent would be sine divided by cosine. If you take that ratio, the hypotenuse terms will cancel and you get opposite over adjacent. So since tangent can be written in terms of sine and cosine, then obviously cotangent can as well because it would be cosine over sine. So really these two guys will be the key terms in defining all six trig functions and that, that's going to be important as well. Okay, So now back to our first point here, since, since the ratio will stay the same no matter how big or small it's scaled, then why, why, don't, why don't we be smart about it and why don't we scale the triangle so that the hypotenuse will have a length of one and there's a good reason for that. 
If you recall, the sine of theta was opposite over hypotenuse, but if the hypotenuse is equal to one, then the sine of theta will just be the length of the opposite edge, because if the opposite edge is, let's say, five, well then five over one will just be five, and that'll get rid of a lot of the fractions that we would have. Uh, cosine theta, likewise, would just be however long the adjacent edge is. So um, we're perfectly allowed to do this because, as we already know, the sine and cosine um, are not dependent on how big or small the triangle is. So we'll just scale this guy appropriately. All right now, let's take a look at this in a graphical sense. Uh, if we were to uh, just start with a hypotenuse of 1 and then see where this terminal edge is, then it's a you know starting at the origin and just extending out into the xy plane it can very naturally be extended into a right triangle just by treating the x-axis as one of the legs and then just dropping a vertical line down from the point down to the x-axis to be the other leg and if you can imagine taking a hypotenuse of one and swinging it around in every possible direction it would this point here would sketch out a circle this is where the unit circle comes from. The word unit is obviously standing for the number one. It's a circle of radius one. Circle of radius one, so it's the unit circle. And uh, it's derived from taking these right triangles that have a hypotenuse of one and taking all possible terminal points along the hypotenuse where the initial point is labeled at the origin here. Now, this makes for some very good algebra. Let's take a look at this here. The opposite edge would be this uh, length right here. Now, now, what is this length? This is important. See, here's the uh, point, the terminal point x comma y. Well, the length of this side is however high y is. If you took this height right here for this y value, that's how long this side would be. So when we say sine of theta, sine of theta, we would get y over 1 y over 1, and it's just y only because it's the unit circle. If I had had a circle of radius 2, I could have easily taken sine of the, that same angle, but I would not have gotten y over 1 anymore. Uh, likewise, cosine of theta, the adjacent edge here, this length for the adjacent edge, well, that's the x-coordinate of the point. So cosine of theta would be x. So whenever you're looking at a unit circle and uh, you've got a point labeled, Oftentimes you'll see that the x coordinate is known as cosine theta and the y value is known as sine theta. And so if you're provided with a radian angle and they say what's the cosine of pi over 4, what they really mean is what's the x coordinate of the point when the angle is pi over 4 uh, along the unit circle. So we can just do a couple um, easy sample points here. Um, let, let me, first of all, just introduce what the angle measures are going to be. Most people from middle school or high school remember that circles have 360 degrees, but more often than not, we use what are known as radian angles instead of degrees. So the radian angle starts on the positive x-axis like this, and then that angle theta I was referring to will swing around until it completes a full revolution of the circle. So no angle would obviously be zero, and that angle would increase until you get to two pi radians. That's one full revolution of the circle. Now you could keep going if you wanted to, but we'll just stop at two pi. Now based off of that, um, you can actually trim down the circle and figure out what all the other angles are in the unit circle. So if this is two pi, then this is pi, because it's halfway around the circle instead of all the way. That'll make this angle pi over 2 because it's half as much as this. That'll make this angle pi over 4 because it's half as much as pi over 2. And so on and so forth. You can continue to chop this up and fill out all the other radian angles inside the unit circle. Again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on writing the unit circle or memorizing the unit circle in this video, so I'm going to stop right there as far as writing the radian angles down. Now each of these radian points, uh, each of these radian angles has a terminal point on the unit circle that has an x coordinate and a y coordinate. And again, um, when you say cosine of that given angle, that's referring to the x coordinate of the point. And when you say sine of that radian angle, 
is referring to the y value at the point. And so I've got a completed unit circle here. This is one that's already done. I'm not going to speak a lot about why these are what they are, but here's just a completed unit circle and you see uh, from 0 to 2 pi, you see all the different radian angles listed here on the inside as well as their equivalent degree measure. And then each one of these has a an x y value, an x y value, and an x y value. Um, and then the cosine is the x coordinate and the sine is the y coordinate. The one on the axes are pretty pretty easy uh, simply because if you're on an axis and you know you're going one unit out, then this would be one zero, obviously. This would be zero comma one up the y axis, negative one zero and zero negative one. But everything else, any other given point here, you would you could very naturally make a right triangle here. Now, if you have it memorized, you don't actually have to go through the derivation of why these are what they are. You just have them memorized. But it's um, quite simple to create a right triangle and just use basic trigonometry to figure out what the x, y coordinates are. So just to quiz us real quick in closing here, if, um, if I said what is the cosine of 5 pi over 6, we'll just do two of these, cosine of 5 pi over 6, then what we should do if we don't have this memorized already is look at 5 pi over 6 and then we would go find the x value because this is asking for cosine. So the answer would be negative root 3 over 2. All right, and the last one I'll let you guys do, um, the sine, the sine of 4 pi over 3, sine of 4 pi over 3. Um, so we would look at the y value, the y value of 4 pi over 3, and coincidentally that's also negative root 3 over 2. I didn't plan it that way, it just kind of wound up that way. Um, and so on and so forth. So somebody who is very proficient at the unit circle, I should be able to ask what the sine or the cosine for any of these angles are, and uh, we should immediately respond with the answer. Now, that initially sounds pretty intimidating. Sounds like that's, that's a lot of work uh, to go into memor memorizing all those. But it turns out there's a lot, a lot of nice patterns in the unit circle. You notice, for instance, all these x, y coordinates look very similar. Um, there's just different changes in sign or different changes in order. So in the next video, I'm going to talk a lot about the patterns that we see in the unit circle. Um, so that, that's pretty much going to wrap up all I was wanting to talk about in regards to what is the unit circle. So don't think that this is just some mysterious thing. Uh, it comes from very something concrete. Uh, uh, in regards to right triangles and trigonometric relationships and whatnot.